listen to me. If there was a wise man who would ever think of this, they would say in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. For I am the man himself. doing and I know it's Sunday evening when I am doing this but this is the Club of the Man 1993 and this is my review of last week's episode of Monday Night Raw this is very late I know I apologize again it was just a very busy week with a combination of trying to keep up with the shorts for the 25 days of Christmas thing because that's the project I focused a lot on. I wanted to try to get those shorts done before December hit. Unfortunately, again, with just how busy I am with the holidays, and it's still very trial and error the first years of doing the holidays as a married man, it's just crazy. It's a little nuts. So, again, it was very back and forth. Um, but also this week, we had a Christmas party that we were preparing for. We had yesterday that was awesome. And um, we had a nice special appearance from Santa Claus. And also we had Sandy Paws and his elf, which Kingsley and Sabbath were Sandy, Cla Sandy Paws and the elf. Um, but yeah, it was just a very busy week. So um, I almost, I somewhat almost pulled the plug on a Raw and SmackDown review for this week. But I, I, I well, I... It's possible when like, around Christmas I may not do them for like the Christmas episodes, just depending on what's going on. Um, but I still thought, you know what, get it in. There was a couple of th word, good, good things I wanted to talk about. I don't want to stay up here too long, which I say that as always, and I probably end up talking longer. Or when I say I got lots to talk about, I'm not here as long. But um, I'm going to roll in and talk about it. Uh, again, this is uh, my Raw review from the December 4th, 2023 edition of Raw, and it took place, where did it take place, actually? I haven't got to check that before I started. Uh, it took place in, oh, in, um, that's where Rumble is. Where the heck is that? Oh, in Albany, New York. Sorry. In Albany, um, New York. Again, it was a good show. The, again, especially during this time of the year, when there's a big gap in between pay-per-views, which, yes, I still got my Royal Rumble predicted match card to do still. Uh, again, hopefully after I get the shorts done. I'm hoping after tonight, hopefully, not promising, because I have to get up earlier for work again tomorrow. I'm hoping I'll have only five shorts left to edit. Because I have nine finished. I'm hoping to get three more done tonight. Um, and like I said, hopefully after the shorts are done, I can get back to a few th other things on the channel as well. Um, but we're gonna, um, but I think right now in WWE, it's still that period where it, it really feels like Triple H is just trying to rotate the roster a little bit. Get some people on TV, get them some TV time and show us what we got. It's like an audition period. And some stuff's working. Some stuff, though, not quite. But we'll talk about As Again, I thought it was a good show. This show, I feel like, was focused a lot more. And, well, well, the main story of this show, I felt that was really developed, is, is the developing heel character of Drew McIntyre. Because, as I said recently, this the way that they're... That, that this heel turn of Drew McIntyre has been very justified. As you know, there's a lot of truth. And as we can understand, yeah, I can get why you're doing this, Drew. But it feels like the more Jay Uso is mentioned, the more of that poison that's just making him more and more on the dark side is just like getting 
deeper and deeper. And I feel like he really took a deep step in this episode of Raw. I thought it was very, very well done. To the point that they may have to give him a title. Like I keep saying, with CM Punk back, and spoiler alert, I do think CM Punk will somehow sign to Raw. Still don't know the story. Well, I'll talk about him very briefly, though, in the SmackDown review. Because he was on SmackDown. And he also made an appearance at NXT Deadline. Which I do want to talk about that. And I do want to, of course, do a post about something he did backstage at NXT Deadline. That, once again, just personifies... That, that, that gives me a point as to why I still think, although I get how he can be tough to deal with, I still think Phil Brooks is a good man. Um, but, um... I forgot where else I was going with this. I was talking about Punk. Oh, yeah. To the point, again, I still think... I think next year... Because I'm still pretty sure they're going to do Punk and Rollins. At Mania. Even though I know that, you know, I'd rather not see him get rushed back to the world title picture. Because I still think this heel Drew McIntyre character. If Drew McIntyre is staying in WWE. I feel like they have to put the world title on him at some point. And I feel like that if Punk did not come back, because it still sounds serious that literally it wasn't official that they're going to get Punk until like the day of Survivor Series. I still think to make up for that, and I'll keep saying this, Punk does not need a long title run. I think Drew McIntyre should be next year's Money in the Bank winner. And he'll be the one, that and he, he'll dethrone Punk with a cash in. That's what I think they have, they should do. But without any further ado, though, let's talk about this episode of Raw, though, because we are going to talk about Drew quite a bit, and he will probably because I haven't created it yet, but will probably be a focal point of the thumbnail. So the show opened up with Drew McIntyre coming out. He walks up to the show and talks about how hypocrites can leave and do whatever they want and come back and instantly forgive these days. Seth tried to put, pull a fast one on him last week by giving Jay a title shot tonight uh, to stick it to him and slap him. So he headbutted him in the face. And he was actually teasing Jay Uso because of how he apologized to Randy Orton last week. And he says, Jay's time is coming. But there's someone he is forgetting. Sami Zayn, which brings out Sammy. Um... And Drew says to Sammy, um, it's the truth that he's the one person in the world that deserved to get screwed by the bloodline. We just told Sammy that. Sammy was part of the bloodline. He was a bloodline's lapdog and errand boy running away from Drew every single week. And then he screwed them over. What did he think was going to happen? He deserved what he got from the bloodline. And Sammy's like, you're right about one thing. That's that... The more he hears, the more he's sure they're not alike. And he's not delusional. He's not pointing fingers at everyone else's shortcomings. And when he lost his title shot, he stayed driven, carried it on to win in the main event of WrestleMania. Night one, of course. So he got redemption. And he got to make his family proud. But does Drew think he's making his family proud? Which, of course, that obviously set off a spark in Drew. Because Drew then says, one of us isn't walking out tonight. And he calls for the referee. So Drew and Sammy have a title, have, not title match, have a one-on-one -on -one match. They were advertised that they set up last week. Um, during the match, though, uh, Sammy Zayn did something with his knee. And Drew just took full advantage of that. And which led to him hitting the Claymore. And I don't think he did the countdown. Which is good. I'm sorry. Even as a babyface, I didn't like that. I did not like that, that countdown for, with the, to the Claymore. But he beats him. But then later on in the night. Um, later on in the show. Uh, Sammy was getting checked on by the doctor's. But then Drew McIntyre rolled up and just literally just beat the crap out of him some more. And he's just like, we are not alike. And he's also as offended that Sammy mentioned his family. 
And he just continued to aggravate the knee more. I know some people were saying, could this have been instead for an actual title program if Drew would get the title with Drew and Sammy? Long-term story-wise, that'd be pretty good. Like, I wouldn't say SummerSlam next year. Because, again, if Punk would be the one to dethrone Seth at Mania, I really, I, I, and of course, you know, I wouldn't, they could, well, I don't know. Could they do SummerSlam? Probably not, because Money in the Bank is usually in July, and SummerSlam is right after. I could see Drew cashing in either at Money in the Bank or by SummerSlam. Maybe next year's WrestleMania? Well, well WrestleMania 41? I don't know, but that idea is not kind of interesting with this long-term setup they're doing right now. They, it could, you never know. Because Sammy does kind of deserve that moment, I think. But, we'll see. And, it could be the run Drew deserves to have in front of fans. Maybe, we'll see. But, so Drew does that and he beats up Sam. But it wasn't a lot of who saw Drew that night. Um, we have an interview with Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. And Shayna's got one goal tonight. And she's going to remind Nia Jax that she put her on the shelf for two years ago. For two years, well, I think she wrote, I think, was she Nia's last match on TV before she got released? I can't remember. Or, well, before she took her break, before she got released. And reminded her, she reminded her of that limb by limb. I do like when she says that and gets vicious, of course. Um, And then we had an interview with Becky Lynch, but then Nia Jax interrupts. And she says that Becky was talking about fights. She had a horizon, and Becky says she'd be number one on her list because she'd forgotten about her, but they never really got to go one-on-one. And she still owes Nia a receipt from back in 2018 whenever Nia broke Becky's nose. And it's true, they never really got that feud after that. And then Nia says, after she's done with Shayna, she's all hers. So they have a match with Nia and Shayna, and look... Again, there's no secret. I, I'm not a fan of Nia Jax whatsoever. And a lot of us aren't. I'm going to give her a wee, wee bit of credit. Just a wee bit. I do think they booked, even though, again, she's still not that great. She has been booked a little bit better since the last time she was here. Well... Meaning that, like, her matches aren't really half-assed. Like, that's, I mean, again, outside of the fact that I just think she's not a safe worker, it just always felt like they half-assed her. Well, I, I'm going to say this, too, because this one, I feel like they're building, they're eventually, whether we love it, like it or not, they're eventually going to do Rhea and Nia one-on-one, probably. Do I like that? No. I think they're going to do it still at the Rumble. And Rhea's going to beat Nia. So that's kind of the fear I have they're, they're going to do again. I don't want to see Nia Jax on top, but I'm not going to lie. She's had a couple matches lately that are a little bit, that I actually was a little bit into. Because she did kind of make her opponent look good. And I'm talking about the match she had with Raquel recently. And even this match with Shayna wasn't too bad. There were several times I thought Shayna was going to beat Nia. But Nia has been winning clean, even though, again, it's not that impressive. But, again, I'm not going to lie and say that. I feel like she's been booked a little bit better. But, again, I'm still not a fan. I'm not a fan at all of them doing Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax. But I do feel like she is getting some... Her matches are getting a little more pop to them. Again, like, again, the, the two recent ones, the one she had with Raquel, like, a week or two ago. And then the one she had with Shayna was actually pretty good. But still, heh, my hole. Still not a fan. Still not a fan at all, but just give us a wee bit more credit. But afterwards, Becky Lynch did come out to confront her, but Nia ran away. But that will be, that will be nice to see. Unless, of course, well... I mean, maybe that could be a way to try to get have Nia get a title shot at the Rumble. 
Because I think it's pretty obvious at this point they're, they're going to do Rhea and Becky at Mania. That, I think, right now, that's probably the best match, in my opinion, to do on Raw still. Becky and Rhea. Again, like, again, I don't... I don't want Becky to dethrone Rhea. Again, I love Becky, but it's like, can we get somebody else in these moments? Like, in, <clears throat> someone else besides Becky, Charlotte, or Bianca. Like, those three women, they can, they can win matches at Mania. But use them to, like... Elevate, you know, some talents, basically, in the non-title feuds. Like, there's not really a story to Becky winning the title. Or Charlotte winning the title. I keep saying it. I think they should have Jay Cargill debut at the Rumble and set up for a match with her and Charlotte Mania. No title on the line. No title on the line. And then Bailey and Io is a long-term story on SmackDown. And that's actually interesting to me. But this could be a feud that, that, that will kind of get maybe nine of the Rumble, and then Becky will probably fight Rhea at Mania. Just have, some, just have Bayley win, win the Rumble, because Bayley hasn't won the Rumble yet, though. Have Becky win Chamber to face Rhea. That's what I would do. Um, we also have this two out of three falls match with DIY and Imperium. And it wasn't too bad. I you know I, I do like that Imperium had a strong showing in this match. I'm still not a fan of this booking, this this storyline with you know them teasing this breakup. I just still think they have so much more to offer. But it just feels like at this point, even with Triple H getting more control over them, it still feels like a little bit of a lost cause. Like Alpha Academy, like when Triple H took over, he gave Alpha Academy so much TV time. And it feels like even though they were losing a lot, they were getting somewhere. Imperium. I don't feel, I still feel like they're really getting anywhere with this. You know? I don't know. It could just be me for all I know. I don't know. But it's just, ugh, I don't know. But that was a good match. Hopefully it gives DIY some more steam. I'm thinking maybe they could eventually win the tag titles soon. I don't know, I think it's going to be a little bit because people still don't really... People who didn't watch NXT don't really know DIY. I will deny it also, though, I'm not really a big fan of the theme song. I, I do miss the old one that they had in NXT. I get it, you know, they got a groom, they got to get new stuff. I mean, probably also because it was a CFO song, I think, as well. So they don't really have the rights to it. I don't know, I'm still not a fan of the new one. But maybe it'll grow on me eventually. Who knows? Um... We have a backstage, a couple backstages. Uh, first w with Alpha Academy chilling with the Creed brothers. Gable saying how proud he is of them, but he warns them that it only gets tough from here. And Julius says Ivy Nile is their secret weapon against Rhea Ripley, uh, who was handle her while they feud with Judgment Day. And Gable then takes up how strong Maxine Dupree has got, and she was doing squats with Akira Vizawa on her shoulders. Cool. I do like the character development, of course, they've done there with Maxine as well. Like, if it was Vince McMahon, oh, she'd be getting shoved down our throats. She would be. But, like, they're slowly, like, they're allowing us to see her develop. And I like that. And Ivy Nile, too. Again, I think she is going to be big as well. Because, again, again, with that Battle Royale, like, anytime I've seen her wrestle on the main roster, because I didn't watch her in NXT... She really has like a a nice powerhouse type um, persona to her, which I think is cool. Um, then we have our truth chilling in the Judgment Day's clubhouse again. He talks about the almost flat screen TV he has for them. It's like a very old looking TV. And then JD tells him to leave, and he does, even though he's under the impression he's part of the Judgment Day. He still thinks he is, which is hilarious. And then Damien Priesto complains about Drew McIntyre and says that Rhea and Finn aren't here tonight, so he's in charge. So he tells Dominic and JD to go take care of the Creed brothers. Show them they don't belong here. Um, then there was a random tag match with... Uh, I wish they would call her Casey Cotton Zero again, but Katana Chance and Casey... Katana Chance and Caden Carter taking on Tegan Knox and Natalia. Oh, uh, match was solid. 
Uh, Chelsea Green, though, was going to be upset no matter who won the match. Although, I think she was upset that Katana and Kaden won because they already beat T and Natty. Which, I'm a little... I'm not... The, you know what thing about this match? That it didn't quite... I still want to get behind this band, this Tegan Knox bandwagon. As I keep saying, I really think Tegan Knox give her another year with solid TV time, and you can build her up as as as, a, as a, an underdog babyface for WrestleMania 41. I still again Triple H obviously has a lot of faith in her. I'm just still confused as to where the story's going now that they already lost the tag title match to Chelsea and Piper or Chelsea and. P, as Chelsea calls Piper Never. She's just P. Um, but, I don't know. Like, to me, kind of like that loss. Like, I get it. Like, they're trying to keep the underdog persona on her. But I suppose they didn't really follow up with it this week. You know? I just think they, they, they should have given them the tag titles you know, last week. But, just me. But uh, Katana and Kaden are still fun. They won the match. And we're probably going to get a tag match with them. Um, then we have Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, coming out. He, of course, is addressing Shinsuke Nakamura since Nakamura finally admitted that he's the one that Cody's been targeting for a while. Um, he said uh, he, as a little boy, was was being terrified of the man who did it because he saw the miss when he was younger, the Great Muda, which Shinsuke Nakamura, like what. A year ago, I actually did get to wrestle him in an outside WWE match, which is cool. Not having experience in this, though, he fears as a ch- as a child we're, we're justified. But he's not pointing fingers or casting the blame because you have to have big aspirations. You paint a target on your back, and he did when he was the first to declare himself for the 2024 Royal Rumble match. Nakamura has his attention, so there's two things they can do. Nakamura could emerge from the shadows and explain himself, or come down here and fight like a man. Um, and then Cody's waiting, nothing happens, then the light dims. And then Nakamura's on the Tron, which I still really like how they he cuts these promos. Like, again, like something like this was missing from him the first time he was a heel. I, I still kind of wish they would have pulled the trigger, gave him, gave him the title when he feuded with Seth. But again, I, I, the, the positive out of that, even though he may not ever win the world title, which he, I still feel he should have, especially with how much of a god he was in NXT, I still appreciate that that feud at least gave him a character. But he appears on the Tron, and he says how he made Cody's eyes burn last week. Tonight he will open them and show him what he's not seeing. How their paths are very similar. They both climbed the mountain, got to the top, and then slipped and tumbled into a bottomless pit. Talking about basically how they both won the Royal Rumble, and then they both didn't capitalize when they got to the top. He tells Cody he'll never make it back there, but he's awakened him and will unburden him. Step in his shoes and take Cody's story that he has to finish off his hands. Um... So he can finish his story because Nakamura is never going to get to finish his. So now he wants to finish Cody's, which I think is a very interesting story. I, again, it's just simple little things like that that makes it interesting. Will Nakamura beat Cody? Probably not. But it, it, it's it's a nice promise. But anyways, guys, come back on and Cody's like Shinsuke. I appreciate you being honest. Um, we may have similar paths, but until he stands in this ring, he doesn't rate him, and he don't respect him. He's never run from a fight, and if Nakamura wants to prove they're the same, he'll show him. And they have a match for this come tomorrow night at Raw. Okay? We also then get a recap of Drew taking out Sammy earlier in the show. Jay Uso's then in Pierce's office asking how Sammy's doing, and he pledges to, he pledges to take care of Drew back in time himself. He's also ready for his world title match, and then of course, um, and of course, but then he also wants to help Sammy and take out Drew. But then Pierce tells him that Jay, you're locked in for tonight, and don't risk the main event. So of course, 
Jay decides, okay, I'll behave myself. Then Gunther wants to roll up and have a chat with the general manager. Whatever that is, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Judgment Day, um, Dominic Mysterio and Jamie McDonough, the now former NXT North American champion because uh, Dominic lost the title to Dragon Lee uh, at NXT Deadline last night. And um, originally it was supposed to be Wesley, but apparently he has a back injury and Dragon Lee did replace him. Um, so we'll talk about that more though, because there was an inter- some of an interaction between them on Friday for SmackDown involving Santos Escobar as well in that U.S. tournament title tournament match. Um, anyways, though, but the Creed brothers did beat them, and then afterwards, uh, Judge they basically told Damian Priest that seriously, take them seriously. They are the real deal. They are that good, which I agree. They are pretty good. I would say I wouldn't say put the tag titles on them quite yet, though. But at least treat this as a way to spotlight them. But it is true. I I do agree with that. I am definitely digging the the Creed brothers so far. Um, we also get a recap of Randy Orton signing with SmackDown, and then Adam Pearce rolls up the Seth Rollins. And tells him how he's inviting CM Punk to Raw next week. And he plans to sign up to an exclusive contract. Seth tells him he doesn't give a damn. But when Punk shows the world who he truly is, he needs to let Rollins do what he does. And then Jay rolls up to give the champ some respect and says this is his night. And he's telling him right now he's looking at the new world heavyweight champion. Seth laughs and gets serious and tells him... He'll stomp his face into the mat the first chance he gets. And then Jay says he'll return to favor. And they fist bump about it. And then they have the match. Which was good. I'm sure if you get, get it on pay-per-view, you might get a little, you know, more. But it was a good match. Uh, Seth wins with the curb stomp. And afterwards, Drew McIntyre comes out and attacks Jay. And then Seth tries to save Jay as they still each other. Uh, but then Drew, um, Drew uh, though, took Seth out, and then he put Jay through the announce table with a crash landing, and that's how it went off the show. So yeah, Drew McIntyre is getting more and more dangerous. I would have definitely seen Drew win the title at Rumble, but I don't think right now. Again, again, the match to do... I mean, I guess you could do CM Punk and Seth Rollins. Maybe, but... I don't know. It's hard, because if you would do Punk and Rollins, it would have to be the main event. And if you put the title on Drew, though, you kind of would want to see Drew get that main event spot again. I mean, or get the women a spot, because... I got to give Charlotte Flair some credit. With her and Rhea, we're kind of a little disappointed they weren't the main event of night one last year. And it's kind of true. Both winners of the Rumble should get the main event spot, in my opinion, for Mania. Especially if it's still a two-night show, which it's going to be till further notice. I don't know. It's tough. It's really, really tough. But time will tell. It's going to be very interesting to see, of course, at the beginning of the year, where Drew goes. If he goes, if he still sticks around, or he could leave. I very well could definitely see him leaving go to AEW. I think it's very possible. But, it's very up in the air right now. I, can, I can't, if it was a few months ago, I would say yes, he's definitely going to AEW. But now... I'm not so sure. But around WrestleMania 40, we'll have to wait and see. But that's Raw. Um, about a half hour, not bad. Gave the show a B, though. Again, I, some things I'm so interested in. Like, I think the only thing that I, I wasn't really interested in, again, I still don't like the storyline with Imperium. Um, and again, I, I was a little disappointed with how they followed up with the loss from Natty and Tegan. They kind of just like acted like it never really happened, and then they just lost to Katana and Caden. But we'll see where it goes. But that's my thoughts on Raw, guys. Gave it a B. 
What are your guys' thoughts on Raw as well? Hopefully, I'll get smacked down into that as well. Make sure to leave thoughts down in the comments section below. And be sure as always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content on my channel. And follow me on Twitter as well at the Club of the Man 93. And you may also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the Club of the Man 1993. And until then, guys, and check it out. I'll catch you guys all later. Have a great rest of your night. And do not forget, in order to be superior to the man, you've got to be the man. And for I am the man himself. And that is not just an opinion. That is a fact of life. Yeah.